so I'm going for a walk in the woods today so it's another perfect opportunity for a podcast and the way I'm doing these podcasts is that they're available in audio and video form obviously if you get the audio you don't get the advantage of the lovely scenery that I'm walking through Anyway, this is the second part of my series of kind of how gardening helps you mentally, mainly, in life. And the first topic is just really teaching you the value of hard work and kind of delayed gratification. There's a lot of work in growing your own food. And... It's not immediately obvious to you that you're going to get a benefit from that work and that's really important in life it teaches you the importance of grafting and that eventually you know life generally rewards hard work but not always so it also teaches you that bit of resilience that things don't always work out the way you think life isn't always fair so the next thing is challenge and not just challenge really that state of challenge that psychologists call flow which is when the level of challenge is within your capability and that's generally true of gardening in general it's generally you know mentally and physically challenging but you can do it you know you can do it and when you're in that state of being challenged within your capabilities you just get into this state of flow just the sort of state I'm in right now walking it's hard work I'm going uphill, it might not seem like it, so I'm challenged, but I'm pretty confident my legs are going to get me there. So the next benefit I think is probably one of my all-time favourites, is gardening, like almost nothing else other than hiking, teaches you that you really do not need a lot of money to be happy. A scrap of land, a few seed packets, some decent soil and enough time and energy and you can be in bliss for next to nothing hiking is even cheaper and I also love that gardening really teaches you the value of lifelong learning you know there's nothing so humbling really as gardening seems so simple when you get started but you realize that it's just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of new things to learn that are absolutely fascinating but uh, not absolutely necessary but great fun if you really want to uh, get the most from your gardening hobby and thanks to things like YouTube and podcasts and blog posts and ebooks, lifelong learning isn't just fun, it's very cheap too. I also like the fact that gardening is very humbling. Really, no matter how experienced you are, how careful you are, Things will always go wrong, someone will always be better than you, and uh, yeah, pride always comes before a fall. You can have the most wonderful veggies one week, and the pigeons have got them the next. (laughs) It really is quite a humbling hobby. And I also think that it's important not to compare yourself with other people 
and I do think that's one of the problems when people watch a lot of YouTube videos because what people are generally showing on those YouTube videos is their best and you're comparing them you know with your worst and that can be quite damaging and demoralizing um, so I think it's best to try and compare and compete if you want to compete with yourself unless you've got the kind of mental resilience if you're a true competitor and you really have embraced you know failure and the fact that everything is a learning opportunity and that uh, your self-worth isn't linked to the quality of your cauliflowers and continuing on that theme I think that gardening really does teach you that uh, everything doesn't have to be perfect and I think that's particularly the beauty of allotment gardening allotments can be a mess and they can still be extremely productive and to be honest most allotments are a mess because they're you know they're the sort of land that nobody wanted for anything else full of perennial weeds that are almost impossible to get rid of weeds blowing in from everywhere and you know just they don't need to be perfect in fact most people embrace recycling when they uh, take on an allotment and that just helps mentally to get you in that right frame of mind that uh, it's good to knock something together to bodge to improvise rather than seek perfection and you know if you want perfection perhaps it's nice to uh, garden where you've got a bit more control in your back garden I actually like the balance of the two I also love that gardening also teaches you patience you know things grow, seem to grow so slowly and then actually towards the end they go so quickly but uh, yeah it's uh, it's a real great way to teach and embrace the value of patience and that uh, there's always next year and then finally just the value of community that's one of the loveliest things about allotment gardening you know just so many people all happy to help each other all kind of on a shared mission it really is lovely anyway I think I'm closing up now my name is Steve this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and the Gardening Week podcast. <laughs>